A few weeks ago, I put out a video demonstrating my ultimate smart home voice assistant. It's basically a voice assistant stealthily installed in the ceiling of all the rooms of your home. So it kind of feels like Iron Man's Jarvis. Jarvis, could you kindly vacuum a digital wireframe? 1974 stock Expo model scan complete, sir. If you haven't seen that video, then I highly recommend watching that first. Now, from that video, I received three main questions from you guys. The first question is, how did you make the voice assistant start the conversation with you instead of you having to scream out her name? The second question is, how did you make the voice assistant know what room you were in by tracking your Bluetooth watch as you move through the home? And the third question is, what is the hardware? Where is the amplifier? How did you mount it in the ceiling? Why did you choose Amazon? And that's what I'm gonna talk about today, the hardware. The next video, I will discuss all the software behind it. If you like these videos, please consider subscribing to this channel. It really keeps me going. And if you want an install like this done for you, please go to futureproofhomes.net and reach out. Okay, let's dive into the hardware behind the ultimate stealth smart home voice assistant. Okay, so let's talk about some of the requirements of the system because that kind of informed the hardware choices that I had to make. So first, I knew I wanted to put the voice assistant in the ceiling and I wanted her to speak through the in-ceiling speakers. And so that meant that I needed a voice assistant with audio out capabilities. Unfortunately, Google doesn't have that, Apple doesn't have that, and so it pretty much comes down to Amazon. The second requirement is that I knew that I wanted to be able to stream multi-room audio with no lag, no delay, no echo, everything should be in sync, but the voice assistant should be able to layer in to that whole home audio experience. The third requirement is that my televisions needed to be able to output Dolby Atmos surround sound and the voice assistant should be able to layer in to movie and home theater audio as well. The fourth requirement is that if anything is playing over the speakers, that volume should be turned down when the voice assistant speaks. And then after she's done speaking, that volume should just ramp right back up to where it was. The fifth requirement is that I wanted the voice assistant to always speak at a consistent volume level. Just because I turn the volume down on the music doesn't mean that I want the voice assistant to also speak in a quiet tone. The sixth requirement is that I knew that I wanted intercom capabilities between all the rooms. And the seventh requirement is that it needed to be programmable, so I should be able to create my own code and make it do things that I wanted the voice assistant to do, and it should be compatible with Home Assistant. So in its simplest form, you'd think you could just put one of these in your ceiling, plug it in to a power outlet in the attic, and then route the audio out to a two-channel amplifier, and then plug that amplifier into two in-ceiling speakers? Imagine if you did that in three different rooms. It's that simple, right? Not really. The problem is, if you try to stream Spotify through Amazon, and you do it across three different rooms, you're using Amazon's multi-room music service. And that notoriously will cause echoes between, between all, between the, all the different the rooms. rooms. There's latency problems, there's syncing problems, it just doesn't work. The other issue is that when you stream that music through here, it's coming out that little headphone jack. And so the quality of the music coming out the speakers is pretty bad. Another issue is when you turn Spotify's music volume down on this, it will also turn down Amanda's voice. That's not what I want. I want to turn the music down light, but I still want her voice to speak at a strong volume. Another challenge is if I wanted to use those in-ceiling speakers as my surround audio for television, then I would have to use this to power Netflix or whatever video I'm watching. This is the Amazon Fire Cube. That's the only way you can get the audio to come out of here to power those surround channels in the ceiling. And this is not a good product to use for home theater. I don't recommend it. So in general, no, it's not that simple just to put this in an amplifier in the ceiling. We had to think of something better. Okay, so let's take a closer look at this solution. HTD.com allows you to buy a mount kit. And in that mount kit comes a piece of plastic that you put in your ceiling, and then the ability to mount the Amanda in that little cavity. And then they give you a balun. That balun has on one side of it 
a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack that goes into the back of the Amanda and a five volt barrel connector that supplies power to Amanda. And the other end of that Balin connects to a very long ethernet cable that runs all the way back to your amplifier. And so that ethernet cable then plugs into another Balin. That second Balin plugs into the wall for power and then takes the audio from the Amazon Amanda and allows you to input it into the amplifier. Specifically, at the top of the amplifier is the voice assistant input. And so if you look down below that, you have another input, which is where you plug in, in my case, the Sonos port. And so now this amplifier will automatically switch between the Sonos music streaming or the Amanda voice by that little delay knob right there. Lastly, on the speaker binding posts, you can see that you're running long speaker cables all the way back to the two speakers that are mounted in your ceiling next to the Amanda. And that's basically it. Now, if you're wanting to layer Amazon Amanda's voice into your 5.1 Dolby Atmos surround, it gets a little bit more complicated. Let me explain. First, you need to plug in a Sonos Arc to your television, and that will give you 3.1 surround through that sound bar. And you could also wirelessly plug in a subwoofer somewhere in the room via Sonos. That's all great. But your goal is to get surround audio to come out of those speakers in the ceiling, right? Well, turns out you can only pair a Sonos amp with the sound bar. You can't pair a Sonos port. So this means I have to plug the Sonos amplifier into the HTD amplifier, which is not good. You don't want to plug an amp into an amp. And so because of this, I had to plug in a line out converter between Sonos amp and the HTD amplifier. And this enabled me to put the four speakers in the ceiling and use them as a surround audio with the Sonos Arc and the subwoofer. At the same time, it gives me the ability to layer in Amazon's voice into my Dolby Atmos solution. All right, so I hope that was a helpful and informative deep dive into the hardware underneath this ultimate smart home voice assistant. If you have any questions, leave comments on the video. I try to get back to all of you. If you could like the video and subscribe to the channel, that would be really helpful. If you wanna know what parts that I purchased, check the description below. And stay tuned because the next video, we're gonna go deep into the software underneath this system. And we'll also be talking about presence tracking and we'll go even deeper into automations and home assistant. But thank you guys for the time. I'm really excited to continue making content. See you guys soon. Oh wait, I almost forgot. If you want this installed at your home, please go to futureproofhomes.net. Reach out to me. Let's work together.